Okay, this is Tim Lloyd from gmat.cz, part of Gain Access in Prague in the Czech Republic. This is another question from the awesome Sandy Gupta's selection of advanced GMAT questions, uh, focused purely on the quantitative section of this particular channel on our uh, Gain Access YouTube channel. Now, this question I would highly recommend that you pause the video, uh, take a screenshot, and read this question very carefully. Okay, as you can see, um, there are two parts to this particular distance rate time question. Many people believe that distance rate time questions never go above a 650 level on the GMAT. Um, that's, a, that's a misconception. Um, there are many uh, subtleties to the reasoning of this type of question. I'm going to split this particular question into two parts. Now, first of all, let's establish, of course, uh, you shouldn't be watching this video unless you're regularly scoring above 600 in uh, practice tests. But all of us know that the formula is distance is rate times time. I personally prefer to use a DRT or a dirt triangle, as we call it. Uh, the reason being um, particularly visual, and I like that visual um, set up um, however you like to write uh, the information down you need to be organized so um, John versus Jakob they both uh, in part one they both start at the same time uh, they have different rates so let's get that information first of all put into some kind of uh, table or some kind of equation as I say I prefer to use these dirt triangles <coughs> Um, it's it's uh, quite clear that John is traveling faster than Jakob, but in this first part of the question, they both travel um, according to their rates, um, a particular uh, distance. Now, because they're traveling at different rates, um, if we just immediately write down D1, in other words, try to connect the two by... Um, using the same variable for this is clearly wrong okay so we take a step back uh, we say okay no wrong variable for Jakob Jakob let's say travels um, or Jacob travels d2 during part one of this story and John d1 so d1 is clearly going to be greater than d2 no need to go into details here the rates faster and they travel for the same period so let's try and find out how much further John will travel in this part of the story compared to Jacob. Well, it's um, important, first of all, to unify our units. We're talking about miles per hour. So, yeah, we have to change minutes into hours. Two thirds of an hour is equivalent to 40 minutes. <coughs> and um, again, um, if, if you're not regularly scoring above 600 on cheap practice tests, you probably want to take a step back and come back to this but we're gonna uh, factor out our common um, variable if you like which is uh, the, <coughs> the time traveled and compare the rates we subtract the smaller from the larger so 15 minus 12 multiply that by um, the two-thirds and that will give us the extra distance traveled using distance to rate times time for the faster cyclist. So in other words, John cycles two miles farther than Jacob at this particular point. And notice the way I'm talking to myself as I'm doing this question. This is an absolute fundamental area that I teach any level of student. You have to talk to yourself correctly during a GMAT test. Break this particular type of question down into a story, okay? We know now, we're happy, we're content. The first part of the story is this, but hold on a second, there's another part to the story. Now, this is where the 700 level student will separate him or herself from an average level student. Be confident, read this question. You'll notice straight away that something happens. Okay, take control of the question by saying, how am I gonna convert that into math? <clears throat> so simply put, during John's pause, um, Jacob caught up and overtook. This means that we add two to the distance that Jacob cycles in part two. Consider part two to be a second part of the story. He also cycles for one more hour in part two. So um, as we mathematically um, approach part two, we need a reference point. 
That's the way I like to communicate it. Let's say that John in part two travels for x hours a distance of d3. Um, okay, there's, that means that during that uh, particular time period, remember while he's repairing his tire, uh, Jacob would have caught up, overtaken, but we have to consider that catching up. Uh, the rates remain the same, absolutely the same. This is uh, given in the question stem. Um, well, okay, if we're using John as a reference, um, we need to be careful what numbers we put in here, okay? He travels for, um, during uh, part two of the story, for one more hour, and he's caught up those extra two miles, and you must add that to the distance for part two. So the reference point, yes, is John, but we've divided the question into part one of the story and part two of the story, and that's the easiest way to handle this type of very high level uh, on the GMAT uh, type of uh, question. So, um, without going any further, let's just get our um, equations uh, clearly written. D3, in other words, this particular distance traveled in part two by John is 15x, where 15 is his rate, and x is, is uh, the time traveled. Well, we're using that as a reference, so we can immediately say D3 plus 2, in other words, Jacob's traveling 2 miles further, is Jacob's speed multiplied by X plus 1, the time that Jacob's traveling, which is in part 2, John's time of traveling plus 1. Um, we can immediately substitute D3 as 15X, so a little bit of manipulation, pause if you need to, we can very quickly get down to... 15x is uh, 12x plus 10, move the 12x to the left hand side, we get 3x is 10, and therefore x, which remember represents the amount of time it takes for John in this particular case in part 2 to catch up with Jacob, okay, because remember Jacob's already caught up with John and then overtaken him, and we can then say that in 3 and a third hours, 10 divided by 3, um, John will have caught up with Jacob because that way the distances traveled are equal but of course there's more to this than meets the eye originally in uh, the first time we read the question so this is indeed a very high level question for many people but watch again if you need to contact me if you need to ask any questions I'll be absolutely delighted to give you any feedback and receive feedback. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.